Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third edition of Coffee with Coach Douglas. Coach Douglas, welcome to your show. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah, it's, it's fun to have. You know, we've done three of these and uh, we're getting ready to do our third. And uh, it's exciting. You know, we, first of all, it's sweater weather. I've got shorts and a sweatshirt. It's the best time of year. Got some coffee. We're at the Salty Dogs. So uh, just enjoying life. Like I said last week before the Langston game, just, you know, driving in that morning, uh, just seeing the, the leaves start to turn and, you know, just love coaching football. It's awesome to get out there, especially when it's a little cooler and uh, just go you know, have fun with the guys during practice. And so, you know, just uh, enjoying life right now. This is the best time of year. You're absolutely right. It's football weather. We're ready to go. Who you got with you today? Well, we've got Ray Willie here, um, from uh, one of our Illinois boys that joined us from McMurray, and then Dylan Sieber, also from uh, Nevada, uh, that came to McMurray with us as well. A couple guys that followed us to, uh, down here to uh, Lyon College, and so we just wanted to bring a little Mac flavor to the uh, interview, I guess, today. Awesome. Well, welcome, guys. I appreciate y'all being here today. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just start off with a couple of questions for the guys Absolutely. here. Uh, Ray, let's talk about, um, you know, first introduce yourself. Tell me what position you play for Lion College. Um, and like you just said, I'm, I'm Ray Willie. I play D-line, and I'm a senior. Okay. And then Dylan, go ahead. I'm Dylan Sieber. I play cornerback. I'm a senior as well. Well, talk about the, your times, and I'm going to just let either one of you answer this question. Talk about your times at McMurray with Coach, uh, Coach Doug here. It was, a, it was a great learning experience. I really learned how to be a college athlete under Coach Doug learn pretty much everything I need to know to go through the rest of my college experience and so I didn't want to keep learning from them. Awesome. Yeah, I'd say it was a great time. <clears throat> um, I actually was there my freshman year, so it was a whole new start to everything. It was mm -hmm. great, just the culture that was there and everything. That's, and that's why I'm back here again, is just stick with the program. So it was definitely a good time, good time to learn. Let me ask you guys this. What do you think about this year's team so far? Let's start with you, Dylan. I, I think we're pretty good. I think we're a little young in some spots, but I think we definitely have a lot of a key assets that help us in the game. Who are some of those key assets you're talking about? Key assets, well, offense, defense-wise, you know, we have Isaiah Bradford. We have um, Brady Miller, who was just playing all, as well. Mm -hmm. Defense, I think our DBs, our D-line, linebackers, I mean, all of them, I think we're pretty well-rounded. Cool. What about you, Ray? Uh, I really like the culture we got here. I think we have a lot of potential for growth, and I think we're a lot – I'm trying to say we're a lot better than what we put on the field sometimes I feel like mm -hmm. I feel like just from being young and experienced I'm able to handle the highs and lows of the game just learning going through the season helping these freshmen build and leaving a good legacy coach talk about these guys and what they were like at McMurray with you yeah you know Ray was Ray was a, is a little bit of a different situation because Ray came in and, and started offensive line for us uh, freshman year didn't play uh, sophomore year though became a starter at guard and uh, you know, just that learning experience of being a young player and then being on the field really quickly. And then in the transition coming to, to Lyon, we decided to add some depth to our defensive line and ask Ray to make the move over there and has done an awesome job with it. Um, his family is, has been super supportive of me throughout this entire thing as well and, and just very encouraging. Um, I've, I've recruited his area when I was at McMurray, so got a chance to, to meet his head coach and recruit his teammates as well. And so I feel like there's even a, a stronger connection there just because of our, our history uh, at Mac and recruiting that area and his coach and all of that uh, folded all together. Uh, Ray's done a wonderful job of also just developing as a student as well. It was a little bit of a struggle when you agree your first semester, your first couple mm -hmm. semesters, but he started to figure out and the transition, and, and probably Dylan would agree, the transition from McMurray to Lyon is definitely different uh, with the academic ex expectations that we have here, and, and both have adjusted really, really well to that. I think a lot of that is partly is their commitment uh, to being great students, but also a foundation that we laid at McMurray that we're also laying here for the expectation of their performance and their, their diligence in the classroom. And so I think that's all of that together has really helped them to be able to grow, not just as players, but also as students. Um, guys got Arizona Christian this weekend. That's right. Fly to Arizona. Yeah. It's a nine o'clock game for Arkansas people who didn't know that. That's so right. It's seven in Arizona, nine o'clock here. That's nine o'clock p.m. Nine o'clock p.m. <laughs> Saturday night. Um, you know, Arizona Christian, they just come, they're coming off a big win. Huge win. A huge win against Ottawa. Yeah. Uh, Forty to thirty-eight. Yeah. And, uh, uh, last Saturday. You know, talk a little bit about that. What you what you expect out of Arizona Christian coming out? Do you think they might be? Able, you know. 
overconfident, maybe? You know, you hope so. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't feel that way though. They've struggled a little bit early in the season. They lost a, a tough one to Louisiana Christian down at their place about two weeks ago during our bye week. Uh, turned the ball over four times. Ended up losing, like I said, a close one there. Well, the tables completely turned for them in this Ottawa game. Ottawa turned the ball over several times. Arizona Christian had a lot of short fields to score from and was able to hold on and survive. We actually, I actually watched it on the way back from, from Langston because they had a late start, and so I saw most of the fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, it, it came down really to a strip sack inside their 20, inside Ottawa's 20 yard line to set up a score to, to go ahead and, and end up winning the game. So they're riding. A roller coaster of emotions right now, you know, having a couple of defeats that they probably felt like they probably shouldn't historically for them, but then taking taking Ottawa down, which is a local rival, but also at the time was seventh in the nation. So, it's a big day on or a big week on their campus for them. Um, you know, it'll, it'll obviously be a big game for us. It's an opportunity, as I tell the guys, it's an opportunity for us just to show who we are and, and to demonstrate what kind of ball we can play, but also what kind of people we are. Uh, but more importantly, we want, or not more importantly, but along with that, we want to get back on track. As these guys have said, we've got some nice assets. We've got some some young guys that, you know, haven't had, had been able to handle the ups and downs sometimes, or we allow mistakes to compound and put us ourselves in bad positions. I mean, I'll take three plays, for example, last week against Langston. Uh, we don't field a punt uh, around our 20, 25 yard line. It rolls down to the two. Bad play. Yeah. We got to start our offense on the negative two. Yeah. Then we take a sack, or excuse me, we take a tackle for a loss in the end zone, safety. Mm -hmm. Then we punt it and it gets returned for a touchdown. I mean, that's just three plays, three critical mistakes, but that's a 14 point swing. And you just can't have those, and, and particularly against tough opponents, and expect to be successful, much less average opponents. So we have to continue to work on not uh, having these self-inflicted wounds. We can't beat two teams. We can't beat Arizona Christian. We can't beat Lyon College. We can only focus on Lyon College, and we have to eliminate our mistakes. Exactly. I'm going to ask you guys, uh, what's it going to be like for you guys to go to Arizona Christian, you know, take that long flight there, and, and what are you going to have to do to, to the game? Um, just wake up and be there, really. That's <laughs> all there is traveling. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it'll be too bad. I'm actually yeah. quite excited to get traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say one thing is we're always focused on just want to know every week. You know, we're not worried mm -hmm. about last week. We're not worried about the game next week. We're just mm -hmm. focused on what we got to do. So just stay disciplined, play fast, play our game. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I know Tyler Duncan's their quarterback. Yes, and he had a, a tremendous game. He did four touch or had accredited for four touchdowns, yes. two rushing, two passes. Mm -hmm. um, what's going to be the key to stop him? You know, he's Coach Root and I actually talked about this yesterday. He's not a guy that's going to wow you with his arm. We we have faster quarterbacks that can run around in our conference, Texas Wesleyan's, ours, um, even uh, even Langston's quarterback. I think they're more mobile, but he's got some nice moxie about him. He makes smart plays. He doesn't make too many mistakes. Um, he makes plays when things break down, which is a key component for any quarterback. So he's very dangerous. Uh, really, I, th I think with any type of quarterback like that, it's a matter of just playing very solid and not allow him to, when he does make that a, a play out of nothing, don't let it be a 40, 50, 60 yarder. Limit it down to a 15, 20, 25 yarder. Limit the scope of those plays that he's going to make. You no, know, he's got a running back that, that's pretty good too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of the other offensive threats that you guys are going to have to watch. You know, they're, both of their outside receivers, I think, are, are very talented. Um, honestly, I don't know if they're overall as talented as they were in the spring of 21 when we, out there, when we went out there. But I feel like, and I know Coach Bowen uh, in our conversations, and I just watching his, his team over the last two years, very, very, very well coached team. And I see that team playing very cohesively, particularly in a game like Ottawa, where they limited their mistakes and capitalized off of Ottawa's. So it, for us, we have to mimic that. We have to grow into that. But we have to take advantage of, hopefully, a situation where they turn the ball over a few times like they did at Louisiana Christian, and we have to capitalize off of those. And some of that is our doing. So we have to be in the right place at the right time. We have to hustle to the ball. We have to gang tackle, fly around. Uh, when those opportunities come about, when that ball bounces, we have to be there to take it. Well, you guys played against Arizona Christian before, right? Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So what's it like playing against these guys? Let's start with you. 
Um, what do you have to watch for? Honestly, like like Coach was saying, you know, their, their QB is good. He's pretty disciplined. Their receivers aren't too bad. I would just say really just focusing on our game, mm-hmm. making sure that we're doing what we do. I think that's what's going to come with the W. What about yeah. They're a big fly power team in the run game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just staying disciplined, just doing your job. That's yeah. all we got to do. Yep. Talk about them defensively. Yeah. So defensively, they're a very basic 4-2, cover-4 team, uh, which we don't get a chance to see very often, so I'm kind of excited. There's some things that we can do uh, just in our base passing game that we don't have to add a lot of tags and add a lot of eye candy or, or you know, do things that are just a little bit outside of our playbook. I feel like that we can, we're, we can at least do what we have in our playbook and in our, our typical game plan from week to week this weekend. Now for us, I mean, they're, they're going to be very, uh, I feel like at least, they're going to be very apprehensive about getting too close to us. They're going to try to keep everything in front, rally up. They're going to use their speed on defense to just make tackles. They're going to give you the five, six-yard gain and then rally up and try to make tackles. So, again, it's probably going to be a situation where we can't turn the ball over. We have to consistently, small chunks at a time, make plays down the field and put ourselves in the red zone. And then once we get there, we've got to use the run and the pass game and, and use some, some movement to, to continue to drive that through into the, to the end zone. I don't know that there's going to be a lot of 60-yard bombs or anything like that in this game. Uh, for us, for sure, uh, it's going to be a little bit more of a dink and dunk type of, of uh, attack. But I also feel very confident our offensive line has continued to grow every week. Uh, I'm so pleased and happy and and just excited to see our, our offensive line get better. You know, we've got two, not a true start, two uh, excuse me, a true freshman at right tackle, but you know he's going into a sixth game ever as a as a college player. And then we've got a true freshman at left tackle, and we've got a little bit more experience at guard and center, but. Just watching those guys continue to develop in the offense, and we were talking about it yesterday, watching just our practice film against our scouts, and so so much improvement in the run game as far as footwork and fits and staying on blocks, even in practice, but we're starting to see that translate into Saturdays. So I'm really excited to see what our run game will bring for us as well. We have to have a great mix uh, on Saturday in Phoenix to be able to be successful offensively. We can't just get stuffed on the run and then now we're trying to chuck the ball down the field versus either you know an umbrella defense cover four or even man cover like we see most most Saturdays. Talk about the health right now. Is everybody going to be able to, to work this week? I mean, we still might have a couple of people, people dinged up a little bit. Yeah, no, I, we're, we're getting healthier. Um, Malcolm uh, Howard made it through the game uh, pretty well. He was still he's still a little hobbled with the high ankle sprain, uh, but he, you know, he came along uh, throughout the game, uh, wasn't too sore coming out of that. Uh, we did set him a little bit yesterday just to rest him. He had a really good uh, Tuesday, but was a little bit sore after practice, so we set him. Uh, yesterday we'll probably hold him back a little bit today as well he's got so much game experience as I was talking with Ray before we got on here you know when you get to that level that you you're playing your third fourth uh, maybe sometimes even fifth season once you get to the mid part of the season it's more about staying sharp and staying healthy and so for Malcolm, for us, it's really just about getting him to the game. Uh, Philip Brown turned his ankle. He's going to be a little bit uh, hobbled by that. Uh, he's going to be sharing some time with uh, Armani Carl, who were from Jacksonville, just down the road here about an hour. Really excited about Armani as a, as a true freshman. Uh, such great pad level, uh, really good strength, and he's not a, th- a really big, thick guy like you would expect at guard. Uh, he's a much... I wouldn't say thinner, but he's just not the bulkier, blockier type of guard that you normally see. But he does an awesome job. Uh, he's just inexperienced and he's learning, but uh, he makes up with it with some nice athleticism. Um, Jake Ford's doing doing well, doing healthy. Our, both of our tackles are healthy, so we feel really good about that. Isaiah should be good to go. He's got two days of practice under him right now. Um, obviously, we're still concerned about any type of hits that he takes, so we want to try to keep him off the ground. Uh, but uh, he's doing well. Uh, you know, we've got some other guys that have had some lingering issues that are starting to come back. Reed Gonzalez is a huge return for us. Uh, we thought stress fracture ended up being a, a severe uh, peroneous strain. It's a lower leg strain, and so it just really hobbled him. But we won't rep him a lot at wide receiver, but he's going to come back and be our long snapper. And uh, he's about as good a long snapper as I've had. Uh, he gets the ball back there pretty quick. So having him back is going to be huge in the punt game. Some of the, yes, yeah, speaking of the punt game, uh, Jacob Ramirez. Yes. He is 
consistently booting it over 50 yards pretty yes. much every time. Yeah. I mean, you guys are teammates with him. Just talk about a little bit about Jacob there. What do you think? Jacob, I think he's a great guy. Um, you know, coming into it, he was one of the first people that I met um, when he came in. I think he's a really good guy. He always has great energy. Really funny dude. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, he's he's been killing it lately in the punt game, yeah. for sure. Yeah, basically the same thing as Sam. He's just a great guy to sit down and talk to or a good guy to run around with. It's just fun to be around. Well, I and, he kind of ran the ball a little bit last week. Well, exactly. And, and his his running back game has, has really blossomed. You know, when we recruited him, we really weren't sure how long it was going to take for him to develop. But, I mean, he really sparked early. And so we're excited about what he gives us in the run game as well. Uh, and it's a homecoming for him. I mean, he's from Arizona, so uh, he's excited to be able to get back and, and see family and everything uh, and get back home and play. Awesome. Now, I know you got a chance to see a couple of quarterbacks last week. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the two that you kind of, you know, came in to help Isaiah out? Yeah, you know, Brady got a great experience. Um, it was, you know, obviously first time for him to get on the field. You know, we all know his limitations in being able to move, being as big as he is. He's just not, you know, when you're used to having Isaiah and how, how quick he is and how Isaiah can move and uh, the type of just awareness he has in the pocket, it is definitely a change of pace. And I felt like Brady was trying to mimic that in some way. But as I told Brady after the game, you got to play your game. And so for him, he's got to be a little bit more of a pocket guy. He's got to understand how to check it down. Uh, so even though he made some, some critical errors in, in certain situations that you know, cost us with a turnover, but it was a fourth down, I told him it was like a punt. It was fine. You, know, you, you don't want to intercept fourth down picks, but uh, you know, theirs did, so that's fine. We'll take it right there. But um, you know, the errors that he did make, he was able also to rectify later on in the game, which was gratifying to see. was was really nice to see that he's learning as he goes. So I think that experience is going to carry him a long ways. And then Eli Funk, uh, you know, he has he's a guy early in camp we really weren't sure about. And he's really developed and developed and developed. He still has a lot of inexperience going. Uh, you know, he's going to need a lot more repetition to really get comfortable with it. But we see some nice tools there. His, his legs are obviously a big asset. He's much faster, even in the recruiting process that we had last uh, winter. We, he's a lot faster than I expected, um, but he does a nice job with the ball in his hand as well. So uh, we're excited about his future also. Maybe another question, what are you gonna, what's it going to take to beat Arizona Christian this week? You know, as we talked about, I think the biggest thing is eliminating mistakes on our own part. Uh, as, as Dylan said, you know, we've got a good team here. Uh, this is a team, though, that has, has gelled culturally, um, has gelled as a family. But we've got to gel in our, our playing of offense, defense, and special teams. You know, go back to the OPSU game. I thought our special teams were awesome. Special teams did a great job. But then offense and defense let us down later in the game. Last week, special teams let us down. Offense and defense did some good things at times, but not enough to be able to pull it all together. So, again, you know, there's that thing of gelling, and you can, we can debate about what it takes to get there, but really at the end of the day, we just have to eliminate mistakes. Uh, we can't give up sacks. We can't give up TFLs in the run game. Uh, defensively, we can't give up big plays. If, we're gonna make, if they're going to score, they've got to do it in 14, 16 play drives and make them earn it. We can't give them big shots over the top, um, and we sure can't turn the ball over. And I will say, knock on wood, uh, we have fumbled the ball one time this year and we've thrown two interceptions. I and mean, we're seventh in the nation in interceptions, not giving up. Um, we've got to be very high in total turnovers. So I'm very pleased with that, but our mistakes have come through giving up sacks or giving up TFLs or bust that have not allowed us to get a first down on third down or put us behind the chains on a first down that makes it a second along. We've got to eliminate those offensively and again defensively we've got to keep ourselves out of situations where we're giving up 40, 50, 60 yard gains. Gotcha. I'm going to circle back around to McMurray. Good. Okay. Um, what was it like for you to have these two guys on that team? It was awesome. You know, we were so impressed with Dylan athletically. We didn't have as much time with him because we, we had him in the fall and then, then we had that spring off season and then Matt closed. And so, you know, I was really disappointed when he decided, and I want him to talk a little bit about this as well, that he decided to go Nebraska Wesleyan uh, instead of coming with us to Lyon. And, you know, I wasn't, wasn't hurt that I lost a lot of sleep over it, but I was really, we were so excited about Dylan's future that I really wanted him to come with us. And just such a great person as well. I want those type of great people on our team. 
because that makes our team stronger and that makes our team better. Uh, so it was a pleasure to have him. We just didn't have him long enough to develop as, as strong a relationship early on where Ray, we had him for a couple of years. And so again, that connection and then having the opportunity to recruit his high school, uh, it, it was awesome having him. Uh, Ray's, and we I've probably got a million stories that we can tell, uh, particularly anytime you get the offensive line together, uh, there's always stories to be had for sure. Uh, and Ray being a part of that at Mac, uh, there's a ton of stories of just, you know, kind of freshman stuff and, you know, and, and you know, getting shoot out one day and, and then, you know, being the, being the hero in a, in a, on a play in a practice or something like that uh, through the time. But it, it was awesome to have those guys. But, uh, you know, now I'm super excited to have them here. Cool. Dylan, let's talk about uh, transferring to Nebraska. What, yeah, of course. Let's talk about that. So, um, yeah, right after Mac Murray closed, you know, I started talking to Nebraska Wesley, and I decided to uh, go there for my sophomore year. I got there, and, I mean, it wasn't a bad program, but just coming out of Mac, it just wasn't the same. Just the culture wasn't there. And that's the one thing I, I really love about Coach Doug and the way he runs this program. And just we're really a family. Like, it doesn't feel like, you know, we have these little cliques or anything. Like, we're really just one big group. We're really there for each other. And, that's kind of the part that I missed, so that's when I called Coach Doug up, and I, you know, I was like, "Hey, I want to come play for you again." I just, it's just I like the way you run the program, so that's why I'm here now, and I definitely don't regret my decision at all. This is, this is definitely the best decision I have made, for sure. Okay. So my freshman year, we were doing inside run, mm -hmm. and I messed up like I always did my freshman year, <laughs> and every single time I'd hear, "Dag nab it, Ray, <laughs> get your in block," just like that. It's a direct quote. <laughs> Just every day I hear that. <laughs> That's hilarious. But you learned how to do it, right? I, I eventually did. Yeah. Yes. You know, when you transferred here to Flying, what, what were you, you know, what were your thought process going in, knowing that you're going to be with Coach Doug again? Good. I'm, I'm glad. Finally, when I got that call, actually, it was my first thought. I was talking to a few other schools, and actually, it was Coach Lawhorn who called me. Yeah. He's not here anymore, but he called me and said, "Hey, Coach Doug, got a head coach job down here." I said, send me the commitment papers. I'm in. Just didn't have to ask me anything else. That was that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome to have. All right, you've had time to think, Dylan. What yeah, you think? I would say uh, some of my favorite memories definitely was um, last year. Uh, Coach Doug, he would actually have some position groups come to his house for uh, dinner, watch some mm -hmm. football, and everything. I'd say those are definitely my favorite memories. Just kind of having that connection, getting that time to bond with, you know, not only our players, but the coaches as well. So I'd say that's definitely yeah. one of the best moments. Yeah. We actually have the quarterbacks over tonight. Awesome. Yep. So these two guys, talk about, you know, the camaraderie, the, the closeness, and how they become part of this. Absolutely. And, you know, like I said, these two guys, because they're such great guys and, and good players, I wanted them here with me. As I told the guys when Matt closed and the announcement was made, I want them to all to continue to play football. And selfishly, I want them to all to come wherever I'm going. But I knew I needed to get a core of guys that understood what we were doing the Mac way and transfer it here to be the Lion way. And so as, as Dylan talked about the culture, I think you have to have some of that genera generational understanding of what we're trying to establish to be able to, to establish it here. And I, I will say this, just in, I, it's hard to say it's been three years, it's really been two, two and a half maybe, because we didn't even have a chance to work with our guys in the off season uh, of, tw of 20, uh, or the, excuse me, the fall of 20, because we weren't even uh, open physically on campus. And then in the spring of 21, we're in a season, and so there's no development process. And so it was even more important to have a core group of guys that at least understood it and could help, help this one shape. And so now I feel like we're really on track for what I want to establish. Even in the first years at Mac, when we were just horrible athletically, and we were horrible in the classroom, and we, then we didn't have very many guys, we at least started to grow a foundation of family and a foundation of understanding that you know, we have high expectations, but we're going to love you. We have a high standard, and we're going to drive you to that and push you to that so you can be your best but also care about you beyond who you are as a player. We're going to care about who you are as a person. We're going to care about who you are as a student. And so you can get the best experience in those four years. And so having some guys like these two uh, to be able to help us establish that is really critical to the success of our program here. 
gentlemen, thank you for showing up today. Uh, it's awesome to have players on on film, especially with Coach Douglas in the morning. Uh, he's got a lot to say about you guys, and it's all good things, I promise. <laughs> um, you know, Arizona Christian, 9 o'clock, Saturday night. Anything else you want to add before we take off? Well, everybody, prayers for us not losing any luggage along the way or any delay, <laughs> delays on flights. Uh, but we're excited to make the move, uh, or excuse me, to make the, uh, make the flight and to get it. It'll be an early departure for us, so everybody, that, that sucks for uh, everybody. But uh, we'll do it together at the end of the day. We'll be on two buses, and we'll all suffer together, and we'll all do a layover at Love Field together, and then we'll all land in Phoenix at 3.30 together. So um, looking forward to it, looking forward to us get on track. Uh, win, lose, or draw doesn't really matter as long as we continue to improve and play, because as I tell the guys, when this team continues to improve and eliminate mistakes, the scoreboard will turn out, turn out like we want it to. I really like the moxie of this team this year. Yeah, I really absolutely. do. You guys really make up a good, good, solid group. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, you've seen Coach Douglas, Coffee with Coach Douglas, third edition. Look forward to next week. We've got Texas Texas College coming. That's right. Homecoming. Homecoming. That's right. So many recruits coming. Oh, my gosh. we got a ton of recruits coming. Yes. Awesome.